Hello everybody, I decided to do this video on axles because of the amount of questions that I've been getting on Facebook and on YouTube here. So let's start this video out with explaining there are three primary types of axles that you can use on a go-kart. The first axle is a dead axle, the second axle is a live axle, and the third type of axle is a differential. And I'll leave little annotations up above here so you can skip to whatever part, part of the video you want to hear more about. We're going to start out with a dead axle. Now a dead axle setup is a lot like this right here. Essentially all it really is is just a steel bar with bolts welded on the end and then you have a special tire setup on one side that you would have your engine driving just one tire, not both. A lot of the times those setups are like this right here where you have a single tire, you have a special hub that's made, you've got your sprocket, and then you've got your brake right here. It's a band brake most of the time, and the tire setups have bearings on the inside. Now this setup that I have here is for a live axle, so I don't have any bearings in here. Axle setup, you have one tire on one side that has the sprocket in your brake. You have the bolt that goes through there and it put the nut on the end. Your engine goes here and your engine drives this one tire. The inside of the tire has bearings. You've got your axle, if you want to call it that, pretty much it's just a bar, that goes off to the other tire. There's no reason to have any bearings on a dead axle because, well, it don't rotate at all. All of your power from your engine is transferred directly to that one tire. Now, I've had a few questions out there asking me about people who have a dead axle set up with these type of tires and they want to put a larger tire on. I personally wouldn't recommend that because you have, most of the time, mostly, most of every situation I've seen, people have like a five or six horsepower engine rotating one tire. That might be okay, but the problem that you're going to end up with is trying to find a tire. Let's say this is a 12-inch tire that we got right here. If I wanted to make this out to a 15-inch tire, it would be hard for me to find the right type of bolt pattern for this hub right here to bolt my tire onto. I'm sure they're out there, but I haven't seen any. Another th situation that people would run into with a dead axle setup is that even though all of your power is being delivered to one tire, so is your braking system. Your band brake that goes around this little drum right here is going to stop just this tire. So if you're flying down the street on wet pavement and you get up to speed and you go to try to stop, the only tire that's going to be stopping you is this one. This one little tire right here. The band's going to grab this and slow this tire out, slow this tire down, possibly causing this tire to lock up while everything else is just rotating. I personally don't like dead axle setups. If I ever get a machine that has a dead axle setup, I would remove the dead axle setup and put on a live axle. Now if you're building your own go-kart, live axles come in a lot of different forms and formats and sizes. Um, I personally always use one inch solid uh, steel chromoly axles. This is axle steel. This is not some regular piece of steel that I bought down, you know, my steel distributor and then put threads on it in a key way. No, this is axle steel. That's what you want. Don't use all thread as an axle. Don't use regular cold rolled steel as an axle. It's not a very good idea. I could tell you all the reasons why you don't do that. You want to use actual axle steel, chromoly steel as your axle because then you'll run into problems. And there's too many for me to mention right now. For argument's sake, I'm gonna start out with this axle right here. This is a 14 inch, one inch solid axle. It has a one quarter, um, 
no, it's not one quarter. Well, you would use a one quarter key to slide in here. Now, live axle setups will cost you a lot more in material than an actual dead axle will. With your live axle, obviously you're going to need tires, you're going to need bearings, you're going to need your sprocket. Sometimes, here, better yet, let me go grab this one. Okay, now hopefully you guys can see all this. This is the axle that is going on the full screen machine. It is one inch in diameter, 45 inches long. I've got bearings here, here, and one right there. I've got a sprocket. This is a 60 tooth sprocket. You can see the amount of money that that's right here. And I don't even have the brake or the brake, the disc or the, the brake hub. This is a one piece sprocket, which means I don't need to have a hub. The hub is already made part of it with a hopefully you guys can see this with a live axle setup a lot of times you're, you might depending upon the type of tires that you want to get you're going to want to get hubs they're going to fit your tires sometimes the rim of the tire is already adjusted or made for a one inch axle i prefer a live axle setup like this even though it costs more I prefer to have this type of thing other than a dead axle because the power transfer goes to both tires. The braking is transferred to both tires. This type of setup is safer. With a live axle setup, you're going to need to get bearings, which will connect to the frame. You need to get a sprocket, a brake, hubs if your tires that you order for don't come with hubs and the hub is the thing at the end that you'd stick your tire on okay the type of bearings you can get you can get like these these are hang these are a bearing with a hanger or some of you might have seen some of the other builds that I've done where I've, I've just used a simple pillow block pillow block bearings also work too now another thing when it also with a live axle once you put your bearings onto your frame you have little set screws in your bearings that you turn and rotate and they bite into your axle that makes it so that way if your power sliding and your frame is welded onto here it's not gonna slide your axle is not gonna slide through your bearings you can Specifically stick with these little uh, set screws right here that bite into the axle. That's one way to do it. To trust these little things to hold your entire axle together. Another way of doing it is getting some collars. These are one inch collars also. Huh? Okay, well, my battery died on me so I had to go charge it up. But as I was saying about the locking collars, is that you can use these to set to slide those onto your axle and hold your pieces into place. Now, these also have a set screw that bites into the axle. There's different kinds of these that you can get. Uh, this one is one that you just slide over the axle. There's others that have a split in them and then they've got a bolt and you can slide those onto the axle and then you tighten the bolt down and it squeezes it around the axle. That's one type of locking collar. Another type is where it's got a complete split in half so it's two C pieces and then they've got a bolt on each end and then you just put it around your axle adjust it put it where you want it to go and then you put the two bolts in and it tightens around your axle so then when you assemble your entire axle you can have those locking collars in there but your axle over time if you don't put Loctite in these set screws or the Loctite wears out or whatever and these set screws get loose then your axle can shift in your bearings and everything else you know you slam into the side of something you're you know or whatever and you, and if you don't notice it right away your disc in your brake will shift over to one pad and wear out 
one pad faster than the other one, if your axle shifts, your chain will ride crooked, maybe blow off and break apart. So that's one reason, you know, they have these little set screws and locking collars and stuff like that, you know, to, to hold your axle in place so it doesn't shift side to side. I don't trust these little things. Uh, I have done enough builds to know that these things vibrate out even with uh, Loctite in them. If I were to leave my axle, let's say this is my setup right now, I've got my brake here too. If this is my axle, over time what's going to be happening is that while I'm driving this thing around, my axle is going to rust. I can take oil and rub it on it or do whatever, you know, put some type of sealant on it or whatever, but it will still always rust. Water will get inside of here, it'll get inside of here, that sort of thing. In all the builds that I've been doing, uh, well, actually between Allie's go-kart and the Batmobile, what I've started doing is I will set up my entire rear end, I will set everything up, measure everything out, make sure all my, chain, my chains aligned, make sure my brake disc is aligned in the center of the pads, just make sure everything's all set up. Then what I do is I measure everything out. I measure the distances between my bearings and my sprockets, everything. I measure everything out where they are in relation to each other. I write that down. When I'm done with that, I take my tubing, go over to the saw, and measure everything out within. I try to get within 30 seconds. That's the only time I ever deal with 30 seconds or 16th. But I try to get as close as I possibly can with what I have written down. When I'm done, after I have all my pieces cut, I'll take the entire axle apart all over again. I take everything off and then I will also measure how far my nut is on the outside of the, of the axle. So I'll put the nut on, slide the hub in, put a spacer, bring this in, you know, the, the spacer that's designate to that spot because I have everything written down, the whole pattern all written down on paper. The spacer, bearing, spacer, sprocket, spacers, bearing, spacer, brake, spacer, bearing, spacer, hub. By the time I'm done, everything should be lined up no matter what. I put the, put the nut on in the very last end, so I should be able to take this entire axle, spacers and everything on there, put it right onto the frame, bolt everything in and everything's all lined up. I will then set my set screws, put Loctite on them, and you know, tighten everything all up. The primary reason behind that is because those spacers hold everything in place. The two bolts, those two massive bolts on the end of these, these axles will hold everything in place where they should be. Which means that because the spacers are all there, I could literally slide right into a curb, slam the outside of this tire right up against the curb, and nothing is going to move. My entire axle is going to stay in place. So that's what I do. On top of this, on top of it being all spacers, um, I also will put oil in the inside of here, slide that on, so that way it, my whole axle doesn't completely rust, so I ain't got big huge patches of rust and that sort of thing. Now there's still going to be rust getting on the axle, like inside here, every time I drive through water or whatever, there might be a little bit of rust, but not anything where I have to just completely blah, you know, take, take everything apart and literally pull out my grinder and grind crap apart. I don't have to do that. So the spacers actually help out a lot. Uh, plus on top of that, like some of you have seen on Allie's go-kart on the, on the A-kart, you can actually take your spacers and paint them a certain color, red, white, and blue, and have a striped type of thing going down, or make them all bright orange, or whatever, without actually affecting your axle. And that's kind of neat. Like I did on that one, like, on, like I did on when I modified the A-cart. The good thing about having a live axle like this is that you have, like I said, you de deliver power to both wheels, and you deliver braking to both wheels. The problem with a live axle is that the wider the axle you get, the harder it is to turn. So you'd have to add some more weight into the front end of your machine 
if you want to turn better? I've gotten that question a lot. People saying, yeah, when I'm driving, I go to turn, and the wheels are turning, but I still keep going straight. Well, it's because you don't have enough weight in front. That's one of the downfalls about having a live axle. Everything is solid. To get away from that, you would then use, if you got the money for it, you would then use a differential. Differential is a lot like this, except it operates the same way a car's differential does. In, unlike a live axle that delivers the same amount of power to both tires, a differential will deliver the same amount of power to both tires but allow both tires to rotate independently from each other, if you want to say that. So when, it, when you're turning, one tire doesn't have to slip. So when you go to you know, turn a corner, one will slow down while the other one is rotating faster, I, I guess, if you want to say it that way. But that's, how, that's what a differential does. Most go-kart differentials are smaller little units. A lot of them have the one-inch shaft on them. I'll throw up a few pictures here. There are a few companies out there that make differentials for go-karts. Uh, I know that Peerless makes one. Uh, I'm not too sure about the other guys who make them. Uh, but the thing is, is about the differentials is that normally you would not, um, well, you can't put the sprocket onto the axle. You have to place the sprocket onto the side housing of the differential gears themselves because that's what rotates and then in turn rotates the gears on the inside and then spins the axles. Now when placing the differentials it's no different than what you do with a live axle. You would slide them into place through the bearings like in this picture here. And depending upon the company that you buy it from the internal workings are slightly different than other ones. Now when it comes to braking with a differential I'm not really too sure about that because you would assume that the braking, you would put the brake on the other side of the housing of the differential. However, I've seen it, uh, I've seen people put band brakes around the axles themselves. Um, like in this picture here, you can see the band brakes on the sides there. Now, I personally have never built anything that has a differential in it, but hopefully that will change. Not too sure yet. But from what I have been noticing and seeing just doing Google search and reading posts at DIYGoKarts.com, it seems like most of the people who use a differential on their carts or on their builds or their machines are either people who are applying a lot more RPMs and a lot more power to the rear end. You can see in this picture here, the engine is actually a motorcycle engine that they have displayed in this uh, picture. A differential is also what is used a lot in buggies, sand rails, and that sort of thing. They've got a small little differential, the universal joints and the boots, and you've got the axle that goes down. Most of those guys who build those kind of things, who have the money to build those kind of things, are the one, you know, they'll, they'll put in a differential. Out of all of the setups that I just showed you in this video, the most expensive setup to use is a differential. Because a differential, just the differential itself, is pretty expensive. I mean, I've, I've come across, I think the cheapest one I've ever seen is about 130, but that was being sold on eBay. Other than that, they're like two, 300 bucks, depending upon where you look for them. I have always used a live axle. I've never used a differential, and I've never used a, a dead axle setup. They're, they seem, to, they seem to be pretty rugged. I've beat on these things, and, and all the axles that I've ever used are the one inch axles. Uh, from BMI carts. That's normally where I get all my axles from. Uh, they also have, well, I didn't get into this, but racing axles are a little different. They're, uh, most of those are an inch and a quarter or inch and an eighth, something like that, in diameter. And they are either aluminum or they're steel, chromoloy. And uh, a lot of the racing guys use those on their carts because they're hollow 
and that's a lot less weight on the machine itself. Plus, because it's a wider diameter, its tensile strength is can handle the vibration a lot, if, if you want to call it that. From what I've been told and from what I've seen uh, on racing go karts, they will use a wider axle, but yet it's hollow. Not because of its not not so much because of its strength, but because of its uh, its tensile strength in at high rates of speed and road vibration. Uh, because taking taking round tubing and applying a lot of vibration to it and fast rotation is ideal for racing carts over using a solid axle that's thinner, like an inch axle. At least that's what I've been uh, picking up when it comes to reading a lot of the posts on DIY go-karts and just looking around at pictures and stuff like that on, on Google search. A lot of the racing go-karts will use a wider axle but lighter. But yeah, it's, it's wide but it's lighter, it's hollow. And the bearings have to be different, you know, to fit the size of the axle, you know, all that kind of stuff. Now for a lot of my older subscribers, this information is old to you. Uh, but to a lot of my new subscribers, I just went over, well, I just checked and I have like 900 or 9,006, yeah, 9,006 subscribers. So that's, that's great. Like a lot, like I said, a lot of my older subscribers, this, this is old information, but to a lot of you new people who are coming in and just subscribing, this is fresh stuff for you. But anyways, looks like my fire is going out and I'm going to get in the house and I have to render this video edit it, do all the crazy stuff to it, you know. I would like to welcome all my new subscribers, and I would like to welcome all my new viewers. Yeah, it's starting to get cold up here in Montana. I tell you, really cold. I gotta get a dang uh, a door on this shop. <laughs> uh. Oh, one more thing. If you're in the process of starting your own build and you're going around collecting information, my videos are pretty good, they're okay. There is a lot of stuff that I tend to miss, a lot of little things, um, but if you are looking for more of a decisive one-on-one -on -one chit chat with people who are very familiar with building go-karts or your own personal machines, uh, mini bikes, that sort of stuff, you can head over to DIYGoKarts.com and they have a forum over there and there's a lot of great guys over there who can help you out too. So I'd encourage you to go check them out sign up, get an account, and just start posting pictures. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.